As we know, a chess game can be divided into three different parts. The opening, the middle game, and the end game. The end game is, according to some, the most important part of the game. Working on our end game can help better our understanding of pieces individually, especially pawn structures and how they can affect the outcome of the game. Today we will learn about these structures. That way you'll be able to identify them and know exactly what to do. Let's start with the most exciting one, the passed pawn. And as the saying goes, passed pawns must be pushed. The further up the board your pawn is, the more dangerous it becomes. So keep an eye out for opportunities to create one. If your opponent has one, the best way to block it is with a knight. Secondly, the isolated pawn. When there are no pawns adjacent to protect it, it becomes isolated. The only thing that can protect an isolated pawn are other pieces. When you're playing with it, keep your pieces on the board. When you're playing against it, trade as quickly as possible so the pawn becomes weaker. Next up, we have something called pawn islands. There are groups of pawns separated by open files. The fewer you have, the better it is. Ideally, you want to keep your pawns connected, protecting each other. Lastly, the stacked pawns could be doubled, even tripled. Avoid creating them at all costs. Pawns that are on top of one another cannot protect each other. Creating double pawns for your opponent creates weaknesses in their position and could potentially lead to a gain in material. Who knows? There are many more pawn structures to be mentioned, such as backward pawns and hanging pawns, but that will be left for a later stage. See you next time for another Crash Course. Oh, oh, oh.